Trinitarian monotheism separates Christianity from all the rest of the world's religions. Yes, there are three great monotheistic world religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. But Judaism and Islam are Unitarian religions. One person, one God. Only Christianity is Trinitarian, one being of God shared by three persons. Right. Uh, Rabbi, let's move on now. Uh, why is one God better than many gods? Why is it that one is better than two, three, four, five, twelve, fifty, hundred? Ask yourself, if you were God in writing a Bible, right, and like, what would you write to make sure that no one would ever worship anything but one God and no, one God alone, a true one God and no other, and there is no oneness like him? What would you say? Wouldn't you say what it says in Deuteronomy? that uh, see before me, there is no God form before me or after me. And even Moses says before the whole nation. If, please, if you're a Christian, don't be offended. But if Moses believed in the Trinity, that would have been a perfect chance for him to rattle off the Nicene Creed. He would say, ah, he doesn't have to use that form. Use any formula, but say it. <laughs> and remember, it can't, you know, I was once doing a show. I don't want to mention names, not important, but a, a very famous Christian apologist who I have a lot of respect for. It's on YouTube. And he said, I, I said it's not the Trinity. Don't start up this, this words that can be construed as a complex unity. Forget that, okay? There's answers to all that, but that's not what I mean. The question is, why does, if, if the Trinity, the Christian's core Christian doctrine, a, a self-inflicted wound from which it never recovered, if God is, chas v'shalom, is triune, and that means Moses was a Trinitarian, he knew it, did he just forget to mention that part? Like, what was he waiting for? And some people say, it's going to explain it later. You can't explain it later. You can't have what many really nice, but Christian scholars say, progressive revelation. Why? Because it's clear from Scripture that the survival of the faithful depended on them worshiping God properly. That means the notion that God kept the doctrine of the Trinity as it was clearly encapsulated and conveyed in at Nicaea, at the Council of Nicaea, actually better than Nicaea of 325 and Constance and Noble 381. Like, why didn't God say it? And you can't say he waited 1600 years. Why? Because the survival of the children of Israel depended completely that they would worship God properly from the very get-go. You can't wait. To every person who is a true monotheist, not a fake monotheist, I don't mean that in a bad way, don't be offended, but I'm saying a pure, pure monotheist knows that whether someone worships two gods, a bianity like the Marcionites, or worships like the um, Gnostic Christians worship 12 gods or 150 gods, which they did, those were Gnostic Christians, or Trinitarians, or tri tritheists, uh, it doesn't make a difference. If, if it's not one, it just doesn't make a difference if it's five or eleven. You follow? So the question is, what does monotheism convey? This is the key I want to address. Listen like you've never listened in your life. This is very, very deep because there's something very intrinsically connected to believe in one God and no other. Listen very carefully. When we worship one God, that God is, has to be, a node. That means he's infinite. He has no beginning, because he has to be the first cause, and he has no end. He's shochinad. His abode is upon, over eternity. He has, now this is very critical, he has no needs, which means before the world was created, I know as humans, we think, we think, of course, that, well, when does it start? Whenever God created the world. Well, as it turns out, the universe had a beginning. 
which means what was God doing for eternity before the world was created? The answer has to be he was doing perfectly fine. Think about this. Before the world was created, if if you worship one God and no other, if your tongue praises one Hashem and no other, that means before the world was created, HaKadosh Baruch, the world is finite, had a beginning. Everybody knows that now. 75 years ago, people used to say the world was was just had no beginning. Now we know that's nonsense because of expanding. I'm not going to go into the physics. We know the world had a beginning. I'm not going to the whole, the bang, whatever. The point is that the God existed forever prior to the universe. And, believe, and it has to be that he had, he was doing perfectly fine. Therefore, it must be, if there's, if we worship one Hashem, there is, this is the key. This is the rub. Listen carefully. That means there is nothing you have that God lacks. There is nothing I can say that can improve God's existence. There's nothing I have that He doesn't have. HaKodesh Baruch Hu is HaKol Yochel. He's omniscient. He knows all. He's omnipotent. He's all-powerful. There is absolutely nothing he cannot do. There is therefore nothing I have. There is no offering. There is no prayer that I could give that would make God's existence better. God's going, oh, thank gosh. I, <laughs> I know he said thank God. So therefore, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means that we have to ask a question. Why did God create the world? It's clear in a, a completely monotheistic, pure mon radical monotheism that HaKadosh Baruch, the Almighty, blessed be His name, did not need this world. And there's nothing we have that can make His existence better. He's, there is nothing we have that He doesn't. Therefore, we, it forces us to come to the ultimate conclusion. Why did God create the world? The answer has to be because of complete love and chesed, because of love and kindliness. It has to be. Why? Because and it's a complete kindness. It's not like we give charity, which is a holy, holy thing. But the truth is, when we give charity to a poor person, when the poor person says thank you and they smile, we feel good. It makes us feel better. I tell my congregants and my students, if you're ever feeling down, you don't have to take drugs. You don't take medication. Go feed poor people. You'll stop crying right away. So the key is we do feel better from it. There are, are, we are not perfectly altruistic, but God is. And therefore, if there's one God and no other at all, there is nothing he cannot do, and there's nothing he doesn't have. And therefore, we have to conclude that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is pure L-O-V-E, love. There is, and it's a love that we can never, never, all we can do is radiate, soak in the love, drink the love, and seek the best we can to emulate his love, to emulate his Kedusha. Kedushim to you, ki kadosh ani Hashem likecha, be holy for the Lord your God is holy, mahu racham, just as he is holy, he is merciful, ator racham, you too should be merciful. That's why giving charity is the holiest thing in Judaism. It's our attempt to be, to walk, to be like God. We can never, and that's incidentally the greatest act a child of God could perform, incidentally, is burying the dead, taking care of a person who doesn't have anyone to bury them. Why? Because that's the closest we can get of us. Why? Because unlike feeding a poor person, by taking care of the, a dead person, there is no expectation that that dead person can ever repay us. So that's the highest form of altruism. It's up, up as high as we can go. Monotheism, true, true, true monotheism, means that, means that God is complete love, 
that we can only smell, that it must be, and that God is pure mercy. It has to be, because he doesn't need anything. The moment, incidentally, that the purity of monotheism found in the Torah is jettisoned, is abandoned, is sacrificed, is violated, is mutilated, is disrupted, is injured, we right away find that God can't do everything. And for Christians, if you're very sensitive, this is the time to shut the show off, really. I don't mean to offend you, but... If you take Christianity, which calls itself monotheism, and I mean Trinitarian Christianity, that's why Christianity has it that the God can't do everything. You're going, what do you mean? That's why Christianity has to have Jesus die for your sins. Why does, it means why can't God forgive sin without Jesus dying for your sins? The answer is the Father can't. He need Jesus had to die for the sins of the people who would believe in him, John 3.16. John 14. You see what I'm saying? The moment that Christianity jettisons the absolute pure monotheism, and it, believe me, even though the Trinity is a later invention, a later development, already in the Christian Bible we see it's going in a terrible direction. We see the trajectory is clear that it's moving away from Jerusalem and it's moving to Rome. It's moving away from the Holy Land and it's moving to Athens. And therefore, Christianity, even though Christians call themselves monotheists, but that it's already the, the monotheism has been violated, mutilated, and therefore now the Father can't do everything. He cannot just forgive your sins. It has to be that someone's got to pay the price. Why can't the Father just forgive you? He can't because he can't do everything. Why can't he do everything? Because the monotheism has been ab abandoned. It's been disrupted. It's been mutilated. It's been undermined. And that's what it means to be a monotheist. It's not just a numbers game. Or I shouldn't use the word game. It's not just a statement of fact that there is one God, which is true. Of course. I look at read Isaiah 44, verse 6 through 8, and fall, fall to your feet that, that this God is alone. There is no other. Read Isaiah 43, verse 6, uh, 10, 11. It's everywhere. Read it. And, and so, so the, but the key is we now understand what is conveyed. And that is when you have the pure monotheism, that means God is pure love. And that means God is pure mercy. And the moment you can always smell when monotheism has been uh, interfered with, has been in a way mutilated, has been disturbed, has been tampered with, is that God now needs something else to happen in order. That's the answer. And therefore, let every person today who, who, who worships one Hashem, who loves Hashem, say it together with me. Say it. You get a big mitzvah. Give Hashem a kiss. Say it with me, if you would. Would you consider saying these holy words? Shema Yisrael Adinoi Lehenu Adinoi Echot. Baruch Shein Kavoy Machusoli Lombard. His glory is forever and ever, and His kingdom is forever and ever. Thank you for that question.